In the last video, we talked about the bayer villiger oxidation, where we could convert our ketone into an ester using a peroxy acid. Now, if you remember, there are two ways to look at this reaction. One is that you've somehow, through the course of the reaction, inserted a oxygen between your carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon of your starting ketone. Another way to look at it is that the alpha carbon ketone, the alpha carbon of the ketone, migrated over to the oxygen. So this carbon over here, the alpha carbon, migrated over to this new oxygen we've added rather than still being bonded to the carbonyl carbon. So now before we delve into the more deeper subject of regiochemistry regarding this reaction, let's look at some example of a simple ketone, a symmetrical ketone rather, and see what product we can lead. So I encourage you to pause this video and look at this example I've drawn out to figure out what the answer should be. Well, let's see how can we draw the product of this reaction. First, we know that this here is our carbonyl carbon, and this here is our alpha carbon. So we know that the oxygen is inserted between these two carbons over here. So if we just use that as a starting point and draw the product, our product will look something like this. Our carbonyl stays the same. Here's, here's the new inserted oxygen and the rest of the carbon. So this carbon, the one I had highlighted in pink and labeled as the alpha carbon is now this carbon. It has migrated its position, so it's now bonded to the newly inserted oxygen in the compound rather than to the carbonyl carbon. And alternatively, you could have picked the other alpha carbon, which is also correct, this one on the left, and drawn the product using that one, inserting the carbon between this alpha carbon on the left and inserting the oxygen between the alpha carbon on the left and the carbonyl carbon, which would have led to a compound like this. And now you see that we've inserted our oxygen between the carbon, the alpha carbon on the left, which is now over here, and the carbonyl carbon. Both of these products are fine. They're actually identical. They're actually flipped images of each other. So it doesn't matter whether you draw one or the other. They're both right, because if you notice, our starting ketone is symmetrical. We can actually draw a line of symmetry down its middle. That's a terrible line. Let me draw that again. Right. So you can see that they're the, both the alpha carbons are identical. They have the same substituent, same bonding, and that's why either products work fine. But now let's look at what would happen if our ketone wasn't so simple. What if it was not symmetrical? And that leads to regiochemistry. Regiochemistry, where does the oxygen insert into a compound? So let's just start off with an example. Let's take this interesting ketone over here and react it with MCPA, another peroxy acid. And let's figure out what the product will be. Well, there are two possible products since we have two alpha carbons. We have alpha carbon on the left here and alpha carbon on the right here. Alpha carbon one, alpha carbon two. What would happen if the oxygen inserted between alpha carbon one and the carbonyl carbon? Well, our product would look something like this. Here's our carbonyl, the, uh, the newly inserted oxygen, the carbon, and the rest of the molecule stays the same. Or we could have reacted at the site of alpha carbon two and gotten this product on the other side. So which one of these products is obtained through the course of the reaction? Well, scientists carry this reaction out and they figured out that it is always this molecule that's figured that the molecule reacts at the site of alpha carbon two. They came to this really interesting conclusion that is the oxygen inserts between the carbonyl carbon, carbonyl carbon, and the most substituted alpha carbon, the most substituted alpha carbon. So let's look at the, our reaction above and see what this means. So if you look at it, Alpha carbon one on its own 
and we usually disregard the bond between alpha carbon one and the carbonyl when this because it has it is bonded to three hydrogens three hydrogens one two three so that's it's essentially just a metal group on the other hand alpha carbon two if you disregard the bond to the carbonyl and carbon it is bonded to one two three carbons three metal groups it's bonded to so that makes it tertiary carbon a tertiary carbon so we all know that the tertiary carbon is much more substituted compared to a metal carbon so the oxygen would want to insert between the carbonyl carbon and the more substituted carbon this alpha carbon this alpha carbon and its substituent is more likely to migrate compared to the metal group which is why you get this product okay another example make ourselves sure of what we're talking about so I have another ketone here, another ketone and substitute here, and we react it with, let's say, PAA, a peroxy acid, as I discussed in the last video. So first step, identify the alpha carbons. So we have alpha carbon 1 here and alpha carbon 2 here. All right, so let's see how substituted the carbons are. If we look at alpha carbon 1 and disregard its bond to the carbonyl, we see it's bonded to one carbon over here, one carbon. So that makes it a primary carbon, a primary carbon. If you look at number 2 here, again, disregarding the bond to the carbonyl, you can see it's bonded to one, two carbon groups. This carbon, the alpha carbon, is bonded to one, two carbons so as we as i said earlier the oxygen would love to insert between the carbonyl carbon and the more substituted car alpha carbon and that happens to be the, the secondary one the secondary alpha carbon is more likely to migrate over to the oxygen we've inserted into the compound using a peroxy acid so let me draw the product now oxygen this is our newly inserted oxygen this was the pre and this here is the previously inserted this is the alpha carbon 2 which has now migrated over to this newly inserted oxygen into this compound so this leads us to an interesting conclusion scientists made the a list really of which group is most likely to migrate over to the new oxygen that we've inserted into the compound so it turns out the third degree tertiary primary tertiary carbons i'm sorry tertiary carbons are most likely to migrate followed by secondary carbons followed by primary carbons followed by metal carbons or ch3 groups and this here is known as migratory aptitude migratory aptitude Essentially, it measures the uh, aptitude of each of these groups, which is more likely to migrate over to the newly oxygen we've inserted into our compound using the peroxy. And really, the tertiary carbons are most likely, most likely to move to our new carbon, and the metal group is the least likely, although almost never at all, least likely to migrate over the new oxygen we've inserted into this compound. And this is how the regiochemistry of the Bayer-Villiger reaction works.